When you sitting down with Michael and Derek, Michael and Derek, you gotta be talking about how you getting your hustle on. You understand me? Every day Joes, every every day Joes, every day Joes, every every day Joes. Wake up and go get it, hustle gang committed. I'm just a regular guy to I blow up on a million. Every day Joes, every every day Joes, hustle. Every day Joes, every every day Joes, hustle. Michael and Derek, the names you need to know. Let's talk about the things that keep you on the road. Let's go. Time and time. Again, I gotta come back with Wisconsin boys Only good vibes, we gon' put into the universe Good vibes, only like you been into an almond joy We gon' spit the facts, what really keep you on the road Here's a relentless hustle, making sure your family won't for nothing Here's a motivation to success, you dreamed about throughout your struggle I didn't have my shares of ups and downs Safe to say that the stress is down It's safe to say that I'm bossing up Michael and Derek, listen up I get my green bathed in Packer, then I swerve like a Cadillac. We everyday Joe with a passion. No mill ladder, what we after? We uh, every day I gotta top the last. This ain't an episode of Slackers. I can do the mathematics, looks like from where I'm standing. I'm the captain. Keeping my hand on the hem. If I let it go, I just might slip. I'm a coming versus the man, it's a trip. But I still cash out like a corner chip. Everyday Joe's in the show, it's a hit. Everyday Joe's and we lit. Uh, everyday Joe's wanna get rich. Shh, gotta pay attention. Every day Joes, every every day Joes, every day Joes, every every day Joes. All right, three, two, one. It's your boy Stank and DC. We out here with Every Day Joes. What's up, Derek? How you doing, bro? Hey. <laughs> How's it going, Mike? <laughs> good, good, good. Well, we're uh, we're showing a, a new uh, a facelift here today. Uh, I'm, I'm rocking the AirPods. Uh, I've got three computers in front of me and only one's working right now. So um, right. if y'all got to keep watched, going, if y'all watched our last episode, obviously there was a hard stop. So we're doing part two here with David Boyce. Um, welcome back, Dave. And also thanks for having some patience with us with this. Yeah, thanks for having me back. We really appreciate you and coming back. You know, uh, I know our viewers uh, really want to li listen to part two some of your journey and everything but before that um i got a story to tell you guys <laughs> i gotta tell you about hmm. this this dope shaver i got it during amazon prime day and if anybody knows me i'm not an online shopper hate it i like the one-on-one uh, -on -one connection with people because i used to work retail with with derek and um i used to also be a manager as well uh at finish line but uh on prime day i go hard in the paint so i i, <laughs> I go let i go look for those 30 40 50 percent deals and then um i order a bunch of stuff on prime day so i but i got this uh, shaver this electric shaver and it, i'm telling you it's a game changer I know a lot of people loved our beard story uh, last time, especially our TikTok <laughs> followers. They are they were going crazy. So yeah, we we get, we yeah. definitely got a interesting feedback from our last episode, and that, that the beard one was one, and then uh, um, the, uh, apparently our, our swimming story it was a big hit with uh, with our viewers. So hey, Mike, uh, do you have that uh, that shaver handy, or, or are you just gonna I do? Some... I do. Let me go get it. Let me go get it. <laughs> I said we were just joking, Mike, that you just moved, so you probably got to pack away in a box, or maybe it's it's the first thing you had. But judging by yeah, your hair, I, you haven't used it in a while. <laughs> no, 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 it's a face shaver, face shaver. <laughs> so there we go. But this is the Braun Series Five, okay? Ooh. If Braun wants to uh, be a sponsor, uh, feel free to hit us at everydayjoes.tv. That's our website. But anyways, <laughs> I had to, I had to do a little marketing. They have they have like three flexible blades. Okay, one of them is the precision, uh, which is this. So this is to do your little sideburns. 
on the side. Oh, right so there. is it like a beard and mustache trimmer? Or is it a full on like? Close Dude, it's to like I, I'm face. telling you, it's got everything. <laughs> so so you could line yourself line yourself up on your neck, your neckline with this too. Then it's got okay. your your full shaver. You know, just go <laughs> swipe. Whoops. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know but then uh but then the best thing is this adapter so everybody's looking for that brad pitt look you know what i mean and that that morning at after look like when they wake up and forgot to shave for like three four days so that stubble so it's got this these little pinchers i gotta show you these things look at that see that they got these little pinchers on the side, and all you do is literally go like this, pop this thing off, and pop this thing back on like that. <laughs> and then literally, you got Brad Pitt look. Dude, I'm telling you, go buy this sh shaver though. Um, we'll, we'll What's the price point there. on that bad boy? Sponsored product Dude, ad. During Prime Day, this. The, the, this bad boy probably, I think it was like, maybe like 40 bucks, 40 oh, bucks during Prime Day, hmm. but it's like normally like 120. Oh. So Ooh, I, I think is... you could probably still pick it up for 90 bucks or something on Amazon. I'll send you the link. The link will be in my TikTok too, as well. <laughs> Well, now that we got our little product plug, thank you for that, Mike. Yes, thanks, Mike. <laughs> of course. <laughs> to our natural, our, our uh, specially allotted segment here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. All right. Why don't you get us started, Dave? Let's let's um. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to these last uh few weeks and since we've been recorded i heard you guys you went you went to an interest in church uh yeah so i've been doing a few interesting churches as of late uh probably the most interesting one so far has been uh, a biker church uh that i drove to kentucky to attend and uh that one was interesting because wow. i'm not a biker and uh it, it was fascinating just because you get there motorcycles everywhere and as i found out like the the bikers they they would act kind of as bouncers so they'd be ushers they'd be greeters but they also may have they may have to be bouncers just in case like they had a new person coming into church and like you didn't know what their past may have been so you know sometimes they would have to protect these new uh, people coming into the church because they may have just gotten out of the joint, just got out of jail. So it was just fascinating to see wow. uh, different types of worship where motorcycles were like the common theme. It was just so, so different, you know? I thought that was really cool too because as watching, um, yeah, obviously uh, coming out of high school, my father and I bought a Harley and I've always had motorcycles in my, my family and blood and, and just always – been around a lot of that um, but I thought it was interesting too because I've been to a, uh, a few different churches too where I wouldn't say bouncers but like when you walk in they have greeters and and especially if you're new they, they you know try to welcome you and stuff but like even watching your episode where you explained that about having security I was like oh I guess I, I should it should have dawned on me or I should have expected that but I, I really didn't but then when you were really explaining that you know yeah if they're fresh out of you know you know, county or prison or maybe out of a rehab program, like, you know, they also have to act as, as a form of, you know, safety for the, the rest of the congregation and stuff. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And one other point I thought was really cool too, and not trying to jump too far um, into your story about that church, but I thought it was really cool afterwards too, where a lot of them congregated and then took a ride together. I thought that was a really good uh, display of brotherhood and, and uh, you know, a sense of community and, and, and all that good stuff too, as, as far as the church. So I was like, shoot, Dave. And I think I, I think I even commented on it. I was like, hey, next time you go to something like that, like I'll come with you. I got tattoos. I got the, the heart, oh, yeah. you know, blood and all that good stuff. So I'm like, you know, that, that, that would be real cool for me. Yeah. I didn't ask anyone if they were using a Braun 5 shaver, though, so 
Uh, I missed out. <laughs> you know, yeah. probably weren't. <laughs> they, they probably were not. Those guys, yeah. they sp- those favors. guys probably straight shave. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. They just grab a knife and you know they probably can do it with a butter knife. Honestly, those guys. So yeah. those guys are hardcore. Uh, those bikers. So I, I tell we, you, yeah, we got, they were we got fanta- a few hardcore bikers down in Arizona. Yeah, and they were fantastic people. So, so I was really glad to, to meet all of them. But um, yeah, that's, different experience. That's awesome. I mean, I I I, I couldn't imagine um, like what you were thinking when you ju- went in there because I mean. You, uh, you've gone all over the world, like the country, the United States and whatnot, as, and seen a lot of different churches. So, I mean, I know you touched about this in the last uh, episode, like, you know, it's almost kind of like it's your own unique culture. So can you kind of explain like how the people interacted uh, with each other? interacted with each other um it it was interesting just because you they were kind of using like different type of terminology and to what i found out like it was like uh patriotism patriotism was huge over there so like they had just tons of american flags out front um recited the pledge of allegiance i never heard before in a church and um but then they had all these little silly um, trinkets up on stage. So they had like some fake mannequin um, up on stage. Uh, I don't know who it was uh, for the rocker, but then like the podium was like a custom metal fabricated front of a motorcycle. So you had the handlebars and everything. That was super cool. Oh boy, was it ever. And then they could just place the Bible on it and just do the sermon from that. So one of the the interesting thing about doing it the first time, that's wild. Yeah. It's like some of the, the niche churches that are out there. So when I did this the first time, um, I went to uh, a a heavy metal rock church and I was worried that I'd be get thrown into a mosh pit or something during the worship time. (laughs) And then uh, there was another one that I went to in Texas where they would actually hold professional wrestling events there. So, you know, you know, the Hulk Hogan and, uh, you know, the Macho Man, Randy Savage. It was kind of like mixing that with a church service. So I here I was thinking, like, OK, is someone going to come out with like Jake the Snake Roberts with, a you know, like a snake and kind of like reenact the Garden <laughs> of Eden or something? <laughs> And then, like, some guy dressed as Samson would just attack everybody with a donkey. That'd be pretty dogs. cool. Yeah, like, that's what I thought going in, but but no one did that. So it may be a missed opportunity, but um, it was just, it was interesting just to yeah, see. Definitely a missed opportunity. Yeah, and there, there's more type of niche churches I want to try out. So I, for week 10, I originally was going to Virginia for a boat church. So what they would do is they get a boat and that would be the church and then they'd preach from it. But as I was driving there, I figured it might be a good idea to check for the weather. And sure enough, it was like thunderstorms that morning. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do that. But um, th- there's more that I want to do. And I, I know there's a, there's a dog park that I want to try out as well. So I, but I don't have a dog. So I don't know if I can go. So if anyone, well, Mike like does. Well, <laughs> I I got you covered, bro. Okay. okay. You find one in Arizona. You. you can borrow Finley. Right. Finley's famous. Yes. Right. So yes. So yes. So I'll bring my dog uh, next time to Wisconsin when I come there, or we can go to wherever this church is, and uh, Finley. Finley will definitely uh, come. He's uh, is he loud? He's Finley famous, is, so is he's Finley got his loud? own little TikTok. No, no. Oh, oh. He's hyper, but he's not loud. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. 
You can you can watch a lot of his videos on TikTok at Fim, at Finley Famous, but then he's <laughs> also at at our everydayjoes.tv on TikTok. He's featured. We we bring him as bring him in as a celebrity. <laughs> That'd be good, <laughs> Dave. I'm not sure if we talked about this. Uh, maybe we did on the last episode and it just got cut off. But I know you've been. You know, you did the 52 churches in 52 weeks. Uh, the first round. Then you wrote a book about it. Um, and then we kind of walked into some of the the challenges and what you've learned about that as well. Um, I guess you know, moving forward. I mean, it's exciting. Like I've watched a number of your your recent stuff uh, that you posted on YouTube. Um, obviously, the the one that we were just talking about with the, the Barker Church. Um, you know, you've done the Mennonite Church. I guess how do you plan a, a, around that? I mean, you were just talking about the boat one and looking at weather. So, do you have a, a system that you're kind of following throughout this, or obviously weather might be a factor factors and with travel and time being able to work full time too. I guess what is your your plan of attack to try to get to some of these churches and obviously go to some that are a little bit more interesting too? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Sometimes like I do have a a little bit of a list on some that I would like to see. Um, But a lot other times it's like, I'll just pick and choose the morning of and it just makes it a little bit more exciting. Um, so like, there's no like definitive, like I have everything planned out because when I did it the first time, like some of the best visits were just the ones that were the most spontaneous. Like I was just driving on the road, saw a sign. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, you know, a church, a church is happening this random night. I'll go and visit that and see what happens. So I found out that sometimes with planning, yeah, that's great and everything. But sometimes you kind of li- have to live off the edge a little bit. And I know saying living off the edge to go to church probably doesn't really mix. But uh, yeah, like some, <laughs> of, yeah <laughs> like some of the most memorable visits from that church, from the church, the church first tour that I did, it was just, yeah, let's just change up plans and, and just go here for now. So when you do that, um, is that you were initially reaching out to the church and saying, Hey, this is what I'm about. I, I'm willing to do this. I'm asking for permission or is it more of a, um, you know, I'm going to do this and, and ask for forgiveness afterwards and, and I'm putting <laughs> you on social media at that point, or I guess, how do you, how do you tie this in? not get in trouble? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, first time, like, I was just writing about it. So, like, I would take a few pictures after the service. It wasn't anything crazy. Uh, doing this a second time, like, I'm trying to get just a, a few images inside during worship. And I've, I've freaked out two worship teams doing that so far. So I've kind of learned, okay, if I'm going <laughs> to do this, like, I, I should probably give someone a heads up. Because when it came to the biker church, I'm like, I do not want to make someone upset in in this particular building (laughs) like they had you know a pool table and i didn't want to be getting into a bar fight in a church um but uh like other times though it's like i'm just trying to take like real quick um three second videos or something like that um and and listen to some of the the worship music i don't want to get anyone's face on camera um, or anything like that. So I'm trying to be respectful because I'm there to worship first off. Um, but it's fascinating too to be chronicling and documenting everything along the way too. Because t- to me, it's it's fascinating to see what a worship service is and an Amish Mennonite service one week, and then you go to a biker church the next and see how they worship, or then you go to um, a Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints service and see how they sing their hymns. So the, the contrasts are so interesting to see too. That's really good that uh, the the way that you kind of explained it because that's what I th- don't think a lot of people think about this um, is all the time and effort that it takes and energy uh, for and you know communication and everything because you're going to all these different places uh multiple days you know like you said some are planned some are not planned but uh you know would you think would you say this is kind of like a passion of yours i I would think so like one thing that came to mind doing this the first time is uh, a spiritual adventure um like 
to me, okay. it, it kind of gets boring, the, the church I came from, because you just, you'd sit, you stand, you, you sit, you stand, you sit, you stand. And there wasn't really anything to it. But like, if you read the Bible, like it's, like no one's sitting and standing in the Bible. It's these adventures, you know, it's Moses going out in the wild unknown in the desert. And, you know, he didn't have GPS back then. So he got lost a lot. And then you had the stories about, you know, Christ going out <laughs> 40 days and the 40, 40 nights in the, the desert there. So uh, to me, it's, it's something where like, you're not just going to find, um, you know, you're not just going there to find God, a deity, whatever, but like you're going there also to find yourself. You're going out there to challenge yourself to kind of see um, what new experiences that you could find. Because every week, it's like you don't know what you're going to walk into. I think that's really cool because when I first started hearing about this, um, you know, at first I was like, the way social me social media is and how people are on YouTube, I thought it was you know, kind of like, uh, oh, Dave's over here poking fun at religion. This is his view. But I really admire how, as you do this, you're more uplifting everybody's type of church and the way they worship or their spirituality. So it's really cool to, to um, watch your content and the way you put it out there was like, this is my experience. This is what I've learned. Like you make a decision and, and I'm not trying to sway you one way or another. So I think that's really cool. Plus it, it also, um, you know, kind of like you were saying, um, this is a spiritual journey. This is your journey. This is your way to connect uh, on a lot of different levels for yourself. And, um, you know, like you said, if anybody's ever read the Bible or parts of the Bible, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it is like a, a journey where, you know, somebody went out to, to find their spiritual awakening and maybe they hit some challenges and found some meaning or had some self-awareness along the way. So I think it's really neat. And, and the fact that you're documenting it and explaining things is, is really cool because there's not many people that I know of that are doing this in, in the world today. So I mean, kudos to you for a lot of the stuff that you're doing and obviously not being biased about it because I think that's that's where we get so indoctrinated uh, with content out there. Is people are trying to shove a certain message down your face and get you to think a certain way where you're just here. This is what I, I learned and make your own decision. So I think that's great. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like what can we agree on rather than what can we disagree on and then get into a fight and, you know, my theology is better than your theology and uh, like, no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, it's um, got to be nice to people in the world. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, one thing I did have for a question for you, Dave, because with you talking about your spiritual venture, adventure and everything else that brought um, brought a thought to me, you know, a lot of the times when somebody's trying to start their own business, for example, or chase a passion, let's say a dream, you know, often, uh, and then it happened to us as well, you know, like Derek and I told, explained to many viewers and everything else over the last like year and a half, two years, this podcast, podcast has been tough because, you know, like, you have to dedicate time, you know, and when it's your passion, you know, it's, you're more willing to sacrifice other things in your life because you're not passionate as much as like watching Netflix, for example, as you are doing this podcast or something like that. So what, um, what have you like really focused on or like, have you, can you give up? any uh, viewers any tips of like how you've improved some of your efficiency or like things you've struggled with you know like with balancing your time and kind of like where you had to prioritize things yeah that's a good question um i, I know because i tried to start my channel before and it's like it was difficult because i didn't have a schedule and it was so easy to procrastinate it's like, yeah, I can do this. I'll push it back another night and then another week and then another month. And it just got worse and worse. Um, one of the nice things about doing this on a weekly basis is each Sunday I need to be in a church. 
So it forces me to do it, but then True. at the same time, like I need to make sure that I'm doing, you know, my videos in a timely fashion. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to get super behind and everyone that's watching my channel is going to be like, where'd that bald headed guy go that goes all the churches. So like you need <laughs> to be, you need to prioritize your time. You need sure. to kind of figure out, okay, I, I'm going to do this on Sunday, go to church. Monday, I'm going to do some video editing. Tuesday, I'm going to kind of make some final pieces. And then, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday, then I try and get the video out. So it's, it's, it's a lot of prioritization, but at the same time, um, it gives you purpose. It gives you mission because in today's day and age, you know, this Netflix world, you know, TikTok world, like we're, we get consumed by social media so easily but when you actually are working towards something, um, something that's, that is yours, that is your baby, um, it really kind of revitalizes you. It just makes you have purpose and it gives you meaning and mission in life. So that's what, I, what's, what really kind of keeps me going with it. I know you're not one to like, you know, we were joking a little bit on the last one where like, hey, you've had some videos that really took off and had a lot of views. I know you're not about the limelight, but, you know, it's one thing like I know Mike and I, uh, you know, offline, we've talked about like, hey, we have some we've been getting good feedback from a lot of people and we got to keep going like we got to keep pushing. We got to keep, you know, getting in the dirt and um, getting past our learning curve. I mean, we spent a lot of time. Um, you know, a lot of people don't see. I mean, we posted some videos, but like really last year and a half, two years, we've been battling our jobs. We've been battling, um, you know, editing, um, you know, learning curves and things like that, where we finally feel like we're in a stride where we feel like we have something, I guess. Where did, when did that happen for you? Where like, Hey, this is my passion and I feel like I have something here, but like, where, where did that start where you're like, I actually feel like I have something here. And then where did that validation of like, I'm onto something and I need to keep going. Where, where did that kind of happen and where did it transition into that, if that makes sense to you? Uh, for me, it happened the fourth week I was doing this. So like I can, I can pinpoint it. So like when I did, when I started doing the new 52 churches in 52 weeks, the first three weeks, um, I was trying to, I was trying to find what worked. So like the very first church I went to for this, like the video was 28 minutes long. Like it was just way too long. Like I couldn't even watch it afterwards, but it's like, so, okay. So I learned from that. So then I went into the second video, tried a few things there. Still, it's like, eh, like it's not the way that I want it to go. Third week, still kind of working out some kinks. And then the fourth week, then I was like, okay, now I know what to do. So then I started adding music. Then I started adding new editing. So each week, it wasn't like I'm just going to do everything all at once. It was kind of a learning process and kind of learning my own curve, learning different kind of abilities when it came to editing and music additions and just how to format the videos in a way that would be interesting to watch. So uh, I try and keep all my videos about 15 minutes. So you kind of have an idea for how long to, that you have to watch. Because I don't want you to be watching this and it's like you might as well just turn on the church service itself. I'm trying to make it succinct and concise and precise uh, to make it interesting uh, for those who may not go to church, but they're, they're curious about what a service looks like to the Amish Mennonites, what a service looks like to an Episcopal church or a Unitarian Universalist church. So keep it simple and keep it fast. It's quickly become one of my, like when I see your video drop, I mean, I know it's mostly on Facebook, the, the quickest, uh, but it's become a quickly, um, what a, when I see it drop, I'm usually like, okay, I know what I'm watching when I'm on my lunch at work. So I'll pop that in, I'll put my AirPods on and I'll, I'll watch it while I'm eating my salad or some chicken or something like that. And, and it, you know, that's, that's kind of what's went down the trail for me as far as intriguing. And, and for me, like, I don't care if it's a three hour podcast, if you, if you got enough good content, that's captivating, I'm going to watch it. But, uh, that's kind of how it started with me. I was like, Oh, he's got this one's pretty interesting. He's got that one's pretty interesting. And it just started growing. But, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I know with, we've gotten a lot of feedback and we haven't had, um, 
the validation as far as like our, our Facebook likes or our you know, followers and stuff like that, like like what we see see there. But like we've gotten a lot of people reach out to us, friends and family that are like, hey, like love what you're doing. And I was at a wedding this last weekend with my family and I was a lot of times like family doesn't give you compliments, this and that. And I was just like kind of taken back where I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like we, we're on something we need to keep going. And, you know, we don't have that, you know, social media validation uh, or, or anything like that. But um, it was just interesting to figure out kind of where, where you, that fell with you. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And you never know what's going to hit and take off. No. And, and Dave, I, yeah, because for me, it's like, I did a lot of videos, but all of a yeah. sudden it's like, like I did a, a video on about Scientology and then, you know, tons of people started watching that video. And most recently, um, uh, I did a video on the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, AKA Mormons to most people. And from those videos, like I was shocked just to see how many people, um, were interested and intrigued about it. So it's like, it could just be one video or one, one thing that someone sees and next thing you know, you know, who's this guy? What's this <clears throat> podcast about? So you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I think you make some valid points there um, because I, I, I know like within the process that Derek and I've done throughout this last journey of two, two plus years, about two years actually now, um, it's, uh, it's been tough, you know, like sometimes you go through those, uh, pitfalls, you know, you go up and down and everything else. And it's not just like you, you've expressed in your last episode, you didn't start your, your information, like what you did, you didn't write a book, uh, you didn't start a YouTube channel because it was for the views. You were just trying to do it just because you had knowledge and and you want to kind of share your experience with essentially the world and you were just wanting to document that process same thing with us we're just trying to document our process and our journeys and we're not really trying to do it for the hundred thousands of followers on TikTok. eventually we just want to have at least one message reach everybody and then just reach one person just like Gary V always talks about it all the time if you just reach one person you've impacted their life yeah and, and at the same time too like like you never know what kind of feedback that you're gonna get that's one of the 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 beautiful things about social media like maybe maybe everyday Joe's there is such feedback and positive reception to Mike's uh, shaver reviews so next thing that we know, it's going to be like the bronze six <laughs> shaver review. Could be. And then the bronze seven. It's like, I need to see Mike when Let's it comes go. to the shavers. Get your boy in the commercial. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so that might be something where, because yes. you just never know. Like that might be, you, you take the feedback. It's entertaining. Maybe you start doing something like that. You just never know. There yeah, I think go. I'm still on the I'm still on the Braun one mini. <laughs> I don't think I'm on that, that upgraded <laughs> stuff Mike's got. You gotta upgrade your game, bro. <laughs> you're like Mike's you're gonna, operating, tell you're you operating in, like at an I yeah 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 you're got, operating got, like at <laughs> you're operating like at a iPhone six level right now, Derek. Yo yo, I got I got one attachment I use for this beard, and then I line it up with my other razor, which is a three part razor, the the three blade, and then my barber does the rest. <laughs> Up the shave game. Well, that's fine, but I got like blades. <laughs> Not anymore. You dropped them. <laughs> I did. Better watch. Finley's gonna that's, grab them. <laughs> I know. That's why, because I'm I'm shuffling cards right now. Because uh, <laughs> I I do this uh, because as I, as I wanted to do it on the last podcast, I have to give a shout out to my grandma, Grandma Stanky. So she's turning. 97 years old on September 20th. Uh, so she's very religious and she'll probably watch this episode or a lot of your uh, content. She's a very strong believer in faith and whatnot. And she used to shuffle cards all the time as I was a kid. And I just kind of do it uh, when, you know, I'm talking to people or enjoying their company. I, sh I shuffle a deck of cards. So. 
That's also a segue is the stinky family is nuts about card games. Every time I'm around the family, they're trying to teach me some <laughs> card game. I'm like, I'm good. You guys have 10 other yes. card games that I still can't remember. <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> do, do you guys play Egyptian Rat Killer with I go me for the during munchies. commons? <laughs> Oh, yeah. absolutely. I'll bruise up all your yeah. knuckles oh. for me. <laughs> oh, man, that, that hurt. That was the day. I still got it. That was, yeah, <laughs> that, yes, that was, that was fun. That was a good, good game. I haven't played that game in so long. Hey, Dave, if, if I see you this weekend when you're in town for the holiday weekend, we might have to bring that out. <laughs> oh, Definitely. Definitely, and I'm gonna win. <laughs> you never win. I always win. No, no, I'm gonna win. <laughs> if I don't, if you don't, if I don't win, your hand's gonna hurt. So inevitably, I still win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wear gloves then. So. Yeah, it's not gonna matter. Did you ever play Bloody Knuckles? Me and Mike used to do that no. until like we couldn't do it anymore because our hands hurt so much. What's Bloody? You never Knuckles? played Bloody Knuckles? No. Do you know what that is? No. It's probably not. You never Maybe played that? <laughs> Seriously? I've never heard of this. It's <laughs> like the oldest it. game. Uh, my older sister taught me Dude. the game so she could beat me up when I was young. <laughs> you basically hold your knuckles and then it's just the, the you just pull. So oh, you would okay. both hold your knuckles out there. And then and you smack and then, it. And if you miss, and then, then they get a free shot. It. Yeah, and oh. if they miss it. They get a free shot at your knuckles. Okay. But yeah. I think I've seen that. Hence, after never a while, it. your knuckles literally. Get... <laughs> yeah. And then you try to like twitch to get him to fake, and then you can smack their wrist for free again. <laughs> this is the last by, strategy. By the, <laughs> by the way, I have a jack, a king. What is that? A five, a nine, and a four. You know what that is? Nope. It's called I win. <laughs> Every time, different cards. He still wins. <laughs> still wins. What that movie? Name that movie. Do you know that movie, Dave? I know it. I know. No. Oh, come on, Dave. That's oh, a big deal. Come on, Dave. That's a classic. We're gonna have to. Adam we're gonna have Sandler. to start. A, we're gonna have to start another segue. Name that movie quote. Oh boy. <laughs> yes. Every podcast guest, we're going to have to throw a quote, and they're going to have to name it. It's going to turn into a game, next thing you know.